There is so much going on in this patch, and I would really like to be able to break it down into a whole bunch of different videos, because there, I feel like I have a pretty lengthy bit to say about a number of different things, and, well, it's, as I'm recording this, the 30th, and this stuff, it says, you know, that it releases on June 1st, but the thing about that is that that date is in Japan. And so what's really happening is that this is releasing the evening of the 31st in North America. So I don't have a lot of time to actually say things about this, um, to make any predictions or anything like that. I kind of just got to go, go, go. So we're going to go through all of the patch notes, and this might be a long one we'll have to see. So start off... Um, this is just saying that it's being added, so, we, you know, new catalog, all of that stuff that we're used to, new stage, main weapons, new sets of weapons, new table turf cards, all of that is expected, two new songs, new main weapons, it explains the new main weapons, we've seen footage of these, we know about all this, and we know about all of these kits as well, so that's not new. But this stuff is new. Terrain for some stages has changed. This is a lot. We were not expecting this many things. We, it's post-production gem. Oh, this is not the first thing actually on this video that I'm going back and uh, making some corrections to because more information has been flying around on Twitter and now I've, I've actually managed to get the uh, patch downloaded so I've actually been able to go and recon some of these stages. So there are some comments that I made when I was less informed about what the changes for the stages are. It was kind of just my guesses, and that's not really valuable anymore because you can literally just go into recon mode and see it for yourself. So I will be doing separate content on what I think of all of those changes, but I do not have time to make that for now. So I'll, we'll just leave this for as a blank to fill in later. Um, I, I'm going to be a little bit behind the curve on these videos just because I'm going to be traveling soon. And so I need to schedule them in advance and I can't necessarily spend um, the full day tomorrow as of when I'm recording this um, getting acquainted with the new patch. So I'll be a little bit behind, but I'll, I'll try and get that out as soon as I can. Okay, main weapon changes. It's going to look like there is a lot of them, but a lot of them are just going to say exactly this. Damage dealt to splash while increased by about 10%. Um, and this is happening to, let's go down the list, the splooshes, the juniors, the arrow sprays, the luna blasters, the clash blasters, the carbons, the uh, splat rollers, and you know all of their kits, the ink brushes, the octo brushes, the dapples, and that's it. Now, so the, on paper, you know, not a bad idea to nerf Splash Wall right now. V Squeezer and 52 have been extremely strong, and so targeting those weapons specifically, not a bad idea. Thing is, the only weapons that actually got buffs in damage against the Splash Wall were weapons that are almost entirely irrelevant to competitive play at the moment. Um, now, we'll talk about one that I think might change in the near future, but, like, a Carbon Deco is not just sitting and trying to wail on a splash wall. So even though this is a viable weapon, it's not something that's going to make a huge difference there. Um, Inkbrush and Octobrush, like, if you're standing and trying to attack a splash wall... A 10% damage increase isn't going to stop you from getting splatted by the 52 gal standing behind it. Um, you're better off on, like, an octo brush trying to swing up over the top of the wall to hit them than you are trying to shred through it. So, a lot of these, it doesn't make a huge difference. A lot of those, it's like, why did we give it this buff? This is not what this weapon needed. Um... One potential difference would be the Junior, but even the Junior, I think, is best served trying to go after a splash wall by throwing bombs. Um... Because the Junior is getting a massive buff 
in the way that Big Bubbler has been changed, um, which we'll talk about shortly. That was something that I wanted to make a whole separate video on its own, but it looks like it's just going to get lumped into this video now. So I don't think that that makes a huge difference at all. Uh, I think like all of the weapons that they're they're doing this for, this is not what's going to make them viable again. Splash Wall was not by any means their only problem, nor does this even solve that one problem. Um, NZAP is just randomly getting an accuracy buff. Um, now, th th people will immediately jump up and say, that's not an accuracy buff, that's a painting nerf. Generally, I don't think that this actually impacts its painting that much. Um, think about the Splashmatic. Splashmatic is a perfectly accurate weapon. It will always shoot in an exact laser where you're aiming, and it's still one of the best painting weapons in the game. I don't think the NZAP's hurting for this by the paint nearly as much as it is gaining from it by being more accurate, missing fewer shots. It already is a four shot. It's already a relatively slow TTK compared to the the faster shooters like the splatter shot, the 52. Um, and getting this is going to make it so that it's better at fighting, um, which is its biggest weakness as a weapon. It has tons of paint. It has tons of utility. But in terms of actually getting into a scrap, it's not the best. It's generally going to lose a lot of matchups. And so this is only going to make it stronger. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing at the top level metagame because it makes alternatives to pencil a little bit nicer to look at. You know, little tiny, tiny bit of a buff for the end zap makes it so that you might look at that and go, you know... It's not too bad to run a zap instead. Let's just run a zap instead. And that might enable a bunch of other comps that could also be cool in addition to what you're currently running with pencil. So I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's, I think it is definitely upgrade and not just side grade. Um, and I think end zap players are going to like that. Then L3 goes from 29 damage to 31 damage. That is a pretty significant threshold in that there are a lot of things that it will combo with now. Um, there are a lot of things that do specifically 70 damage, things like slosher shots, things like vertical slashes from Splatana stampers, um, the reef slider, outside edge. There's a lot of stuff that it will combo with for a one shot right now. Um, but that would be if someone were to ever run an L3 nozzle nose in competitive play, which I still don't see happening on this basis. Um, this weapon just has not been touched competitively for such a long time, and I think it needs a bit more than this. Um, there's clearly something wrong with its niche in the game um, for it to be seeing as little use as it currently is. So this is like a nice little quality of life buff for whoever's running this, and I don't know who that is. Um, I really have just not seen very many of these at all. Rapid Blaster, white ink frames buff, 1 20th of a second, so three frames. Um, that's obviously, like, not a tremendously huge buff, but it is something that can matter. Um, a little bit of downtime reduction on the Rapid, definitely not a bad thing for it, and since one of its major weaknesses is the fact that it's gonna only have so many shots, and gonna have to recover ink for a lot of the time that it's playing, you know, this is something that helps it a little bit, and that, that can stack up over time, so... Slight buff to it, which I'm not complaining about. I think that this weapon is neat, and its presence in the metagame is very interesting, and I'm all about encouraging that. I don't know why they felt the need to do this, and in such a small amount, but here we are. Um, that takes us to the last two here, yeah. So, Tri-Stringer gets a buff that it really should have gotten much, much, much earlier, it gets a painting buff, a significant painting buff. They're making it, first of all, so that it just inks more by the falling spray. But secondly, that it's easier to paint in a line, in a straight line. That part is also massive for this weapon, because that's something it's really struggled to do, to just paint a line it can swim through. It's been slower for that. So... Lots and lots and lots of good things can come out of that, and this weapon will be significantly stronger for this buff. 
whether it continues to see the same amount of use or whether that use increases is pretty difficult to say. I think it will also depend heavily on whether we prefer the well string to the tri stringer um, for which use cases and the well string is such a, a question mark right now in my head that I really couldn't say. But this is a buff that this weapon has needed for a very long time and better late than never, but my god is it late and I'm glad that they're finally doing it. Then Reflux. Possible to charge in midair at the same speed as when on the ground. This is giving Reflux the same gimmick that the Squiffer has that sets it apart from all of the other mid-range chargers. I'm scared of this weapon now. Um, this weapon, I've been saying, once people start figuring out how to use it in combat and not just as a missile spammer, it's going to be a threat. And I think that there are a lot of people who have been slowly waking up to, you know, trying to make that happen, pushing the weapon. But this is just a massive power spike that it's getting all of a sudden. Um, this is something that can make it a lot more mobile. Um, it's going to be harder to hit shots than with a Squiffer, obviously. I don't think it's going to completely box it out for its niche. But what it brings, in addition to the ability to charge in midair, is some of the most paint that you can get on any weapon and a really powerful special. So I would not be surprised to see this skyrocket in use as a result of this. Um, I think a lot of people who are interested in doing like trick shotting stuff might get interested in this all of a sudden. Like this just became a much different weapon, I think, in the way that you're going to see it play in combat. So I'm excited to see what people decide to do with it. Oh, another thing to, to mention about this is that it's easier to hit all of your shots on a reflux when you're doing the jump shots um, because they're going to line up vertically when you jump shot and a target, you know, a player in this game is generally going to be more vertically oriented than horizontally oriented. So it's easier to get the one shots if you jump already, but now you have less downtime going for those jump shots, so it's going to be even more powerful to go for the jump shots. Um, this is really synergistic, and like this is something where it's like, okay, hold on, Nintendo, stop with the buffs for a second. Let's figure out if we actually broke this thing yet. Um, I'm I'm genuinely thinking that this might see a resurgence in popularity as a result of this. Um, okay, special weapons. These are also some really big changes, um, which is strange because a lot of these things um, tend not to be touched that much when we're going into just an introduce content into the game kind of patch. Usually they leave things well alone when they're doing that and then make the balance adjustments in the mid-season patch. But like some of these, I think, are pretty significant. Reef Slider is one of them. Reef Slider now inks along the rails. So, you know, when you launch a Reef Slider, you see the rails out in front of you, but now those are just going to ink. And it's doing this as the rails extend. So what I'm thinking this means is that if you are in front of someone who uses the Reef Slider, as the rails go out, they might p paint the ground out from underneath you and make it more difficult to get away from the reef slider. So this might mean that you can set up traps with this thing now. What this also means is that slider cheese is significantly more impactful because you just have to line up the rails with the zone and now it puts a whole bunch of paint down on the zone to begin with and then follows up with the explosion. Um, I'm thinking that most of the paint that goes down with the rails is going to be rendered redundant on the zone because most of it is, is some stuff that would have been painted by the explosion anyway. But if you're able to get a pretty long zone and explode it on the far side while the trail is on the near side, that could still add some extra paint to it and that could make it so that you can slider cheese even more zones than you could before. Um, so, this takes a strategy that's kind of annoying already in Splat Zones and makes it more powerful. 
it does drastically, you know, if I'm understanding it correctly, increase the offensive potential of the Reef Slider, though. It will make it so that the Reef Slider can function a lot more the way that it was kind of intended to be kind of a uh, surprise, there's an explosion here now, a aggressive special. And I don't know how I feel about that, because I think at the moment... There are already some traps that you can set up with it. There are already some ways that, like, if you catch someone in a corner, you can pretty reliably just get a splat with it. This, if you're able to trap someone with this, might be a little much. Um, considering the niche that it already has in splat zones. Like, the problem, like, I think if we have this and slider cheese is not a consideration, this is a really solid buff that I, I appreciate that, you know, probably helps people use it in the way that it was intended. But it also buffs the use case where it's not intended to be used for. And that, I think, is bothersome. Um, that might make Splat Zones a little bit less enjoyable for that being so much more reliable now. Um, Big Bubbler now inks the ground where it is placed. It's post-production gem here. Um, we have since learned more about the Big Bubbler, and so I had to reshoot this bit. <laughs> um, initially, Chara was tweeting that the Big Bubbler appeared to paint everything in the entire max radius of the Big Bubbler, which is insane. That would have been a huge problem. It would have insta-capped any dual zone in the game as I, as far as i can think i've i've looked at it on flounder i've looked at it on manta um i think it, there's just any dual zone it would have just grabbed one of them for free um and not only is it going to grab it but like let's say you put it on a, a bigger zone but you put it on the enemy side well now you've painted the enemy side zone and you can paint the easier side of the zone for free because they're blocked from painting any part of the zone because now there's a big bubbler in their way um that just would have been so obnoxious and i'm glad that that's not going to be part of the zones meta honestly um the paint that goes down is only about the radius of like a burst bomb and that's really not a lot um you've got to remember that like with circles if you decrease the radius of the circle the area decreases exponentially like it area equals pi r squared so you decrease the r it's not linear how much area you're losing you're losing an awful lot that's why you always get the larger pizza size because it's worth way way more but the price usually increases linearly it's big big brain stuff big brain stuff anyway um Big Bubbler is not getting anywhere near as massive a buff as I thought, and it's going to be nice for sure. And the Mint Decapitator is a very good-looking main weapon, and so it might do the Big Bubbler prouder than any weapon that has come before it. Um, but I am still skeptical that this is going to suddenly revolutionize the Splat Zones meta. I don't think we're suddenly going to be seeing way more juniors or way more zimmies than we had in the past i think we're going to see a very normal amount of them and that we're not going to see a ton of it in competitive play i think if the mid decavitator gets played it's going to be have to be played in part on the the merits of the main weapon and its ability to use the big bubbler and its ability to just win fights at the mid-range using the main weapon so um that's where I'm at on the Big Bubbler change now, and that's different than it was, which is why I have headphones on, because I don't think I had those in the, in the original video, but too bad. I don't know how much more of a niche Reef Slider is going to have, except that it counters this, so maybe it becomes stronger, but you're also going to be, see, be seeing a lot more of, like, Tri-Strikes, for example. Tri-Strike paints more than a booyah bomb if you spread them out well enough and it, you can also just throw one of them into the big bubbler nuke the generator in the middle and so i think that that creates a lot more use cases for it booyah bombs of course are also going to be strong it's just the weapons that booyah bomb is on are relatively low powered in terms of main weapons right now so it's not seeing as much use we're probably going to see more tri strikes as a result of this than anything else um 
so this all these things are really going to change up the splat zones metagame i think and that's going to be something that we'll have to watch um this is the strongest i think undeniably that the splattershot junior has ever been in this game um we may see a resurgence of junior players we may see people who have not been using this since the very beginning of the game when they realize that they should just pick up splash instead we may see them starting to come back to it and seeing where it can be used again Inkvac. The ground slightly behind the user will be inked periodically while this is active. Um, so this is just putting down a little bit of ink for you to keep yourself safe if you're like wading into the enemy side, um, which could be nice for you know players you're trying to lead in with you. It'll also potentially make it more difficult for someone to get behind you when they're trying to punish your vac. If, I figure if you just turn around in circles... Um, it would make it so that someone at like really close range is going to have trouble actually reaching you that way. So that could be a big defensive buff for it. Um, so that's pretty nice. Nice. I think that's like a quality of life thing for it. I think that's something that makes it a lot more difficult to do something about. So that could be good. And then splatter color screen. I don't think this is going to have a huge impact in general. Um, it just... I've, it says increases damage dealt to the following. I don't know how much damage it did in the first place. Who knows? Maybe it didn't do any damage at all, and this is increasing it from zero to something. I, I couldn't tell you. But um, it is going to paint sponges, and it's going to do damage to Rainmaker Shield, Splash Wall, Sprinkler, and Squid Beacon. So Splash Wall's taking a bunch of weird nerfs from various directions that probably don't matter all that much. Because the damage was not the part of the splatter color screen that anyone was ever really using it for anyway. It's it's always been as a smoke, um, as a way to deny vision to an area. But here we are. So lots of really weird and interesting things here that I think are going to have a significant impact on the Zones metagame in particular. Because these two specials are now worth a lot more consideration. Um, these two weapons, the bows, are going to have massive, massive buffs for them compared to whatever else they've gotten in the past. And then a, a zap buff that I think is going to be pretty relevant. And then that's about it. Um, so that affects a lot of... Th a, a few things a lot is the way I would put it. There are a few things that get like really, really significant changes and then everything else stays the same. Um... There's so much to unpack with all of that and like what I'm thinking about it, but I think I'll have to stop right there and maybe we pick up some more of it on the next video. But um, points for special changes. Big Swig Roller Express gets a slight buff. Painbrush gets a slight buff. I don't think either of these have been seeing any significant competitive use for a very long time. So that is just n not really much. Those are not necessarily bad weapons to put that on um i don't know big swig express was already an ink storm farm weapon that's like the main niche i could see for it and so you know one of the best painting weapons in the game getting a points for special buff that's only going to improve it at its niche that it already wasn't getting picked for so you know it, it, spamming ink storms just isn't one of the things that we're, we really care that much about in competitive play right now so I don't see this making a big difference. And Painbrush, I've gone on record in the past saying that I think that the main weapon is really not good. And that's the part that needs to be buffed before this thing sees any use. Then they just hit E-Leader. Um, the custom E-Leader specifically with a points for special nerf. Um, the Kraken version, I think, is definitely stronger. Um, I have not been seeing very many people pick the vanilla kit since... Um, there are some people who probably just prefer the mines and maybe don't have that much of a use for Kraken, I guess. But this is the one that I've been seeing more often than not these days. And so that taking a hit to Kraken is going to mean fewer Krakens out there. Um, they are adding Range Blaster into the game now, where it's going to have Kraken too. The thing was, this might be a more significant buff if Pencil isn't in the game and people are really considering E-Leader on far more maps than they currently are. But... It was already kind of a niche thing that we kind of go to when we have a, a, a cooler covered already and we don't need the pencil. And so we can just tell our charger player, hey, hey, go have fun. 
Um, most of the time, that's kind of the way that I've been seeing it in competitive. So there's certainly, you know, E-Leader maps. And this will be a little bit weaker on those now, but I don't feel like this was a weapon that really needed the, the, the touch. What I felt needed a change was Pencil, and have been saying that for several patches now. And they've just been so slow to address these weapons that we in the West have considered overpowering. And that may just be that maybe the players in Japan see it differently, and that's the feedback that they're getting back. But for us... It's just felt like, man, why are people not spamming Pencil more? Why are people not just making that almost a permanent mainstay of their team? Like, this weapon is insane. It does so much so easily, like, with so little repercussions for doing it, with so little risk involved. Um, it's... It's really weird to see this weapon in particular be the one that's, that's taking any nerfs when that exists. That should, you know, in, in any understanding of the game that you're going to hear, I think, from someone outside of Japan, I feel like that's just what the, the community consensus has been, that Snipe Rider is up there as one of the most powerful weapons in the game. But the dev team seems to think otherwise, or have other ideas, I guess. Um, Pencil's here to stay for the time being, and... Everything else is still going to have to revolve around that, even if we have a few more interesting details to play with in the rest. So, um, here, they've changed it so that any dashes, so dodge rolls, splatana, charge swipes, in the direction of the Rainmaker shield, um, they kind of deflect a player so that you don't take excessive damage from touching the Rainmaker shield. So, um... I think excessive probably means, like, you will still take the, the a normal bump of damage, just it shouldn't randomly splat you, <laughs> which apparently was happening in some cases. So this seems like a little bit more of a bug fix than, any, than anything, but hopefully uh, that's something that's helpful to those folks. Um, rank changes, this part is really nice. Um, if you make top 1,000 in any mode you'll just go to S plus zero immediately. Um, it recognizes, okay, you made it to top 1,000. You're probably better than S rank. We can just kind of drop you off there. Makes it so you don't have to grind those uh, ranked series to get back up. Not that I've actually had any problems with that because a lot of the time I want to play X rank, but then see that the rotation is awful. And so I'm like, okay, well, this is the next best, best thing. And I, I always have just ended up in the process of doing that, making it up to S plus 10 anyway. Uh, I think I'm at like plus 13 right now without, again, really trying to grind that or anything. I just end up be there because I play that often enough. So it hasn't been a huge difficulty for me to adjust to, but I think for a lot of people who are specifically playing just like X rank solo queue and scrims, like they're grinding for their X rank or something, this will be nice because that'll mean that they just get to stay up there. And it'll be nice for everybody else because you're not going to run into the best players in the world when you're trying to uh, make your way back up to X rank if you dropped out of it from the D rank before. Uh, made it so that the number of times you jump to squid beacons <laughs> give you number one super jump spots. So nice. Placing beacons gets you some recognition on the uh, medals screen, which it's not going to impact gameplay that much, but hey, medals are worth some rank points, and it's nice to see that, like, oh yeah, I was actually helping when I put those beacons down. You know, the game is recognizing me for that. So, I, I like that change. Uh, we made a whole video about this change, Conch Clashes. Um, and then Salmon Run, you get, uh, this was in the trailer, three King Salmonids attack at once. They buffed the Grizzco Dooleys, so they do more damage now. Um, ch 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 changes to Splatnet. There's going to be a new Wondercrust journey, which we'll probably already have all the points we need for <laughs> by the time. You know, the amount that I've played, like, when I remembered, oh yeah, I should probably go and check out Wondercrust. I just, like, blazed through, like, four of them all at once. So, I probably have all the points that I need for that already, but we'll see what rewards we can get from that. And then... 10 Sheldon licenses that you can get from the DLC Battle Boosting Bonus. Um, 
that's exclu included with the expansion pass. So if you've got like side order, for example, now you also get 10 Sheldon licenses. Cool. I, I mean, I've got probably like 120 of those. Um, I, I've got more Sheldon licenses than there will ever be new weapons that are added to Splatoon 3. But what the heck? It's from some gotcha rolls, I guess. Um, this other change is worth noting here. I'm glad that I, I remembered to keep going down to find it. Um, so let's explain what this is doing right here. When equipping the squeezer or foil squeezer, continuously pressing the ZR button in quick succession at shorter intervals than the weapon's normal fire interval will lengthen the interval until the next shot is fired. So what does that mean? What this is doing is preventing you from mashing at a very, very, very fast speed. A fast speed that is often found only when people are using a turbo button. A turbo button, for those who don't know, is a macro. That is a button that you can program to make multiple inputs quickly just off of a single button press. So what it is possible to do, for example, is to have a button that makes it so that the controller will input the ZR button every frame which is faster than a, a human can normally mash, so that they will guarantee that they get frame-perfect squeezer shots as fast as you can possibly get them, and laser people that way. Well, now, if you make it so that you're pressing it that fast, it's actually punishing you by making it so that the fire rate will decrease because you're adding extra time with each redundant input. So they're trying to reward players for getting the timing right rather than mashing really, really, really quickly. That's something that I doubt will have any implications for its accessibility issues. Um, mashing it quickly is still very advantageous, just it's making it so that you can't mash at such a high speed that only a machine could do it. But this does take some potential turbo users out of solo queue for us. Um, or at least make it so that they can only have the consistency that's possible as a person. Um, or get, get them closer to that at any rate. We have a new reportable offense on the end of a, a screen, which is friend request harassment. So... Something that people might do, for example, is change their switch name to something mean and then send a friend request to somebody that they didn't like. And now that's something that you're able to report on the screen. So I haven't ever experienced it myself, um, but I know that it's something that you know people have done. So not a bad thing to have that. And then they start summarizing things in general. Um, and these are all things that we've we've seen, just explaining some of the reasoning for why. You can go read that if you'd like. That was a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more into how I think this impacts the metagame on the next video, because the next video I'm going to talk about my predictions for these new weapons and how they're going to fit in and which ones I'm eager to see people try. But that'll have to be something that we pick up on tomorrow, because this video has already been very long, so go touch some grass, get some sunlight, or at least, you know, do something else with your time. I have taken enough.